Hey, what's up everyone? Miguel Quiles here. And a few days ago, I posted in my Facebook group, which if you're not a part of the Facebook group, definitely make sure that you join. I'll put the link in the description for this video. But I posed the question to the group, what is something that you've wanted to figure out in photography, but you've had a hard time finding any information about? And the overwhelming, resounding uh, message that I heard was that people wanted to hear about color grading. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna show you guys how you can color grade using the color balance tool in Photoshop. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, without further ado, let us get started with this image that I have here, which I shot back in 2016. This was part of a uh, Sony event. They were announcing the Sony G Master lineup of lenses. So the 70 to 200, 28, 24, 70, 28, and the 85, 14. They built this amazing set, had these models, uh, and we kind of gave them this story to play off of. It was like a Bonnie and Clyde uh, type of story where they hit up a bank and robbed them and they have all this money. And so that's kind of what you're looking at here uh, with this shot. And as you can see, um, you know, it's got a lot of green, a lot of red. There's a lot of complementary colors that were already inherent in the photograph. So before I start to do the color grade on this, I want you to take note because you want to start off with some images that have kind of a, a good color palette before you actually begin doing your color grade or else you're gonna have to do a lot more work than what I'm about to show you right now. But this technique is gonna work with any images that you have. I do this on my studio portraits. I do this on my location shots. So all of this is gonna work regardless of what it is that you're trying to do. So first things first, I basically have this raw file, opened it up in uh, Photoshop, and the color balance tool is this little uh, icon here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and just click on that, get that opened. You see that it added the color balance layer and there's a layer mask, which is gonna be very important. And I'm gonna show you not just how to use the color balance tool, but how you can utilize that layer mask to make specific parts of the image a certain color and uh, keep it from being affected on other parts of the image. So it should be pretty cool. Uh, but first things first, we'll double click here. I'm gonna float this window up. Uh, so if you look at the uh, color balance layer as it's set up, basically the first thing you're going to notice is the uh, tone. And you can choose from the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. Depending on which one of these that I choose, it's going to impact different parts of the photograph. So uh, by default, it always starts off at midtones. Uh, maybe you will want to change that. But um, you have these three sliders here. You have the cyan and the red slider, magenta and green and yellow and blue. And just to show you what happens, if I move this slider towards the red, you notice that in the midtones of the image, it's gonna add red. And if I slide it to the left, then in the midtones, it's gonna add a little bit more cyan. So if I wanted to give the image a little bit of a, kind of a cooler type of moody look, um, just move the slider over to cyan and that's, uh, that's a good baseline to be able to do that. So, um, you also have this box here, so you see that it has numerical values. So where it is right now, it's at negative 38. If you want to go back to zero, that dials it back. Um, I oftentimes like doing this because if I'm working with a set of images from the same location, um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll add this color balance layer and I'll memorize what those numbers are. Or I'll write them down on a piece of paper so that when I try to apply that color grade to the next set of photos. I could just add the layer, type in the numbers, and everything will be good. Um, the other thing too is this preserve luminosity, which um, I'm not sure if it's like that on every version of Photoshop, but uh, whenever I add the layer, it's always checked. You want it to be checked because if, let's say for example, here's what it looks like when it's checked. So if I move the uh, red slider in the midtones, you see that it's increasing the red in the midtones, but the overall uh, tone of the image still stays the same versus if I was to, let's say, turn that off. Now, when I increase the reds, it's going to make the midtones a little bit brighter. And I don't necessarily want to do that. Part of uh, the process of color grading an image, you only want to affect the color. You don't want to affect the overall tonality of the image. 
Uh, you don't want to make the reds brighter. You just want to change in this example, you want to change the color of the reds. You want to change it maybe to uh, yellow or green or whatever. Um, that's the color grading part of it. You don't want to actually change the tonality. If you wanted to, you would use a totally different tool, but you don't want to take like a very uh, holistic approach in that way. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. But um, so first things first, I'm looking at this shot and I'm trying to think like, what do I want to do? What where do I want to go with my color grade? Um, there's a couple of different things. I mean, I could see straight away if I go, for example, this image is kind of dark and moody. So the first thing that I usually do with a dark and moody shot is to start to work on the shadows, the shadows first. And I try to see what I could do color wise with the shadows before I start working on the midtones, because uh, the midtones is usually where the skin lives in an image. If you've got people in the photo. Uh, so usually I, I don't really want to affect that as much. In this case, if you see their faces here, you're going to notice that uh, they have some shadows on their face. So when I make these adjustments, the shadow sides of their face is going to be affected. So we have to be careful with that, but I'm going to show you how you can fix that. So let's start off really quick here. We'll just see what we can do. Uh, if I add reds into the shadows, that really doesn't look super great. Um, adding a little bit of cyan because it's kind of a green overall type of uh, tint to the image. It doesn't look terrible. Usually when I'm doing a color grade, the first thing that I'm doing is just kind of playing with the sliders. Uh, unless I have like a very specific thing that I'm trying to do with the colors, uh, which is rare. But um, if I plan things out pretty thoroughly, sometimes I'll know like, okay, this is the color palette I want. And then I just color grade it as such. Uh, but most of the time, a lot of color grading just, there's a lot of uh, experimentation. You try things, you kind of play with the sliders. Uh, sometimes you'll sit down, work on the image, walk away, and then you come back and you're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? This color grade looks super weird. Um, you do want to do that often. But, you know, in this case, usually just starting out, you just play with the sliders. Um, if you click on this little eyeball here, you can turn the effect on and off so you can see what it's doing. So straight away, I mean, it's taking away a little bit of the magenta and a little bit of the red uh, overall in the image, which I kind of dig. This is looking pretty good. Uh, next thing. So there's a couple of ways and we can kind of split here with this tutorial. So you could have this one layer and you can go from the shadows to the mid tones to the highlights and just kind of work on these one by one. You notice how on the shadows, if I select the tone where it says shadows, I have these values here, but if I click on midtones, they're at zero. So I could affect shadows, midtones, and highlights using the simple or single adjustment layer. However, what I tend to do is to actually add an adjustment layer for the highlights, for the midtones, and for the shadows. And that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna title this one shadows. I'll, I'll kind of show you guys why I'm doing this here. Uh, we'll add another color balance here. We'll do midtones. And this last one will be highlights. And if you want to be really tidy, you can group these things together. Title it color grading. There we go. All right, so we have the shadows here, which we've already done our adjustments to. We're gonna go to our highlights now. We're gonna skip over the midtones because again, that's where the skin tones are. And uh, I wanna work on those last. So on the highlights, we're gonna change our tone here to highlights. And same thing again, we're just gonna play with our sliders a little bit to see uh, what looks good. So if I go plus three, that's looking okay. Uh, if I shift this towards the green, there's already quite a bit of green in the shot because the carpet is green, the walls are green. I don't want to go too extreme because you can see that looks uh, almost like there's a green light in the room, which is definitely not the case. So maybe we'll bring it to maybe 14. Looks pretty good. Now we can change these highlights because the wall, for example, you have this area here of highlights. You have these strong highlights on her jacket, her feet, her leg. Um, that's really what's being affected 
right now. Um, that actually is not too bad. And then you could always, again, do the before and after. So you can see it got a little bit brighter. Highlights actually look pretty good to me. We'll go to tones or midtones. It's already selected. Now we'll play with the midtones a little bit. See if we can get something that looks pretty interesting here. Uh, looks good. So you can see right away, I mean, you could do basically anything when it comes to the color. Uh, it doesn't take too much. It's just add the layers, kind of play with the sliders, uh, get it to look however it is that you want it to look. Um, I'm gonna actually turn the whole layer off and on. So you can kind of see this is what we've done with just, really if I wasn't explaining it, this would take me seconds, but uh, that's a really basic color grade that you're able to do. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how you can make this a little more advanced and how you could actually target specific parts of the image to color grade just those parts. Uh, but before I do that, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. If you guys have been watching my videos, I've been talking a lot about Skillshare because they're really awesome. They have a website with tens of thousands of tutorials there that talk about photography, they talk about business, marketing, uh, retouching, basically everything that a creative person would need to hopefully at some point learn to be able to be good at what they do. And you're watching this because you want to learn retouching from me, but there's a lot of great tutorials on the website that cover retouching that go super in depth. Um, some of them give you a bit of a Cliff Notes version as well. So if you feel like this video might be too long, you could always watch videos on Skillshare, which is really great. Uh, I'm gonna have a link in the description for this video. And if you go there, uh, you get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. So you definitely wanna check that out. There really isn't any reason not to do it, right? It's, it's gonna be free for two months. Check out some of the tutorials, especially the retouching ones there, because I think you guys will be blown away by the amount of content that you'll find on there. So big thank you again to Skillshare uh, for sponsoring this video and making this possible. So going back into this, this tool is very, very useful. There is one thing that you can do as well to kind of uh, customize this even more. You could actually, now that I've grouped these three color balance layers together, if I click on this little icon down here, this is add layer mask, you could actually add a layer mask to all three of the adjustments. And if I wanted to, I could take a brush. So we see the, the mask is white. Uh, white reveals black conceals, right? So if I filled this uh, layer mask with black, it would hide all of the adjustments that I just made, but because it's white, it's showing everything. However, if I paint, and I'll get my, uh, my pen here. Um, if you were to actually go with your brush, you could actually paint black on this white layer mask. And what it's gonna do is those areas that you paint, it's going to remove whatever that effect is, right? So you can do it that way if you want. If you wanna target specific areas, you could just apply it to the whole image and then apply the layer mask and then you could take your brush of the opposite color and just brush over whatever areas and just customize it that way. Um, that's one way to do it, but it's not as uh, finessed, right? It's, there's, unless you're really good with the brush, there's probably gonna be a little bit of, um, you know, you're, you're brushing outside of the lines a little bit and so the color grade won't be as perfect. So what I learned is a way for you to be able to do uh, what's called the luminosity mask and I'm gonna show you how to do them. And they're really awesome because you could target shadows, midtones, and highlights in a certain type of way where it's a little more precise. So let me show you guys how you would do that. Let's take off this layer mask. We're gonna do this. And we're gonna go back to, uh, actually, let's just turn this layer off. Let's add a new color balance layer. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to image and we're gonna go to apply image. And if you go to image, apply image, uh, by default, you should see what I'm seeing here on my screen. Uh, if not, plug in these values. Maybe you made an adjustment to a different image and the default stuff hasn't been selected. So. Uh, the source should be whatever the file, file name is that you're working on. Layer is merged, channel RGB, 
Blending mode multiply, opacity 100%. Uh, just hit OK. Basically, you go image, apply image, and just hit OK, unless the values are any different than what you see there. Now, if I click, if I hold Alt, and I click on this layer mask, you're gonna notice that the layer mask looks pretty awesome, right? It looks like a black and white image, um, but this is not a black and white image. What this means is it's actually applied a luminosity mask where it's only affecting, now instead of having that mask where you brushed it in, it created a mask based on the highlights and the shadows that are appearing in the image. So it's super precise. So if you remember, white reveals, black conceals, basically any color in between or any, in this case, there's no color because it's black and white. So any tone in between um, is gonna have less of an effect, right? So if it was pure white, whatever adjustments you make are gonna show 100%. If it was pure black, you're not gonna see any of the adjustments. Anything in between is gonna be kind of a varying degree of how much that um, adjustment is actually gonna make. So you're gonna notice if you look at this shot on this uh, little wall sconce, you see that white, let me make this a little smaller here, this little uh, highlight area here, when I make adjustments to the color balance uh, adjustment layer, it's gonna affect that area really heavily. It's gonna affect these highlights on the walls. It's gonna affect the little table. Uh, basically everywhere that you see that's pretty much white, it's gonna make those adjustments there. Um, on the face, you're gonna notice there's a lot of gray on her clothing, uh, his face. All of those things are gonna be adjusted, but a little bit to a lesser degree. And then everything that's pure black, for the most part, you're not gonna see any type of color shift or any type of uh, changes as you make adjustment layer changes. So we'll turn this back on, and let me show you what it looks like. So in this case, if we're working on the midtones, um, if I increase the reds, or bring it into the cyans, you notice that it's really just impacting certain parts of the image, which happen to be the highlights of the image, and of course, the midtones of the image as well. So you can kind of target specific areas of the image, and you could do kind of a more precise type of color grade. So we're gonna play again like we did the first time, kind of see if we get something that looks different, and then I'm gonna kind of compare and contrast using the uh, luminosity mask versus the basic way that I showed you a few minutes ago. So we'll go into our shadows. And of course, you know, shadows, it's still affecting the highlights, right? Because there's a layer mask. The shadows have been basically darkened out. So it's not going to affect, it's going to affect the highlights and the midtones a lot more than the shadows, even though you've selected the shadows. It's kind of weird, right? But that's the way layer masks works but it's a very precise way of being able to do this. So kind of change this up a little bit here, play with these colors here, and then we'll go into our highlights, kind of tweak these colors just a little bit, bring this down. And again, all of these images, if I went to it like a year later, I probably would do them differently. Uh, so don't feel too bad if you don't know exactly where you want to go with it. So here's before and after. Here's the on and off of this adjustment layer. And as you can see, it's just affecting, we'll go back to the mask, and it's just affecting basically the highlights and the midtones. All the shadow areas pretty much are going to remain untouched. Now, the other thing you can do is, let's say if you wanted to do the opposite, maybe you want to create a luminosity mask, but instead of it skipping over the clothing, cause like his clothes are pretty much in pure darkness at this point, um, but maybe I want to color grade his clothes because that's part of the scene as well. So here's what you can do. We'll add a new color balance layer. We'll do the same exact thing again. We'll go to image, apply image, and we'll hit okay. And it's gonna do the same thing. It's the same exact layer mask. Everything is the same as the first step. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control I. I'm on a PC, by the way, so whatever it is on a Mac, I think it's Command I. Um, so if I hit Command I, you're gonna notice that now the layer mask looks different than the one that I created earlier. If I Alt click on that, what do you see? Well, you see a layer mask now that is mostly white, which means that these areas that are white are now going to be 
100 percent they're going to be affected by any adjustments that are made to this color balance layer uh, the areas of the image that are black are going to be affected a lot less uh, the gray areas again are going to be affected to varying degrees as well uh, so we've basically inverted this mask so now we're going to be affecting a lot of the shadow areas of the image so we'll go to that and uh, we'll start to tweak this a little bit so now you notice that a lot more of the image because it's a darker image the tones are a lot darker you notice that those colors are now being affected to a much much greater degree um, to me if i bring the reds up in the midtones it looks weird uh, but you know sometimes you bring it up and then kind of play with the other colors and you get something that looks pretty cool so we'll play around with this Still feel like the reds are a bit too much. Maybe something like this. And then we'll go to our shadows. Play around with this a little bit. Let's see. Green. By the way, it's really important to have a uh, monitor that has been uh, color calibrated, especially when you're doing something like this. If you want to make sure that your color grade shows to the world the way that you intended it to show, make sure that you have a monitor that's been correctly calibrated. In this case, I'm using the HP ZBook. Uh, this has a 10-bit display, a fantastic display for retouching, for color grading. You actually have the pen where you could just retouch directly on the screen. Um, I'll have the uh, details for this in the description for this video as well. But um, this has been my laptop for almost a year and a half now. And I've used it for photo editing, for ed video editing, everything. And it's, it's, it's the bee's knees, as they say. It's really good. So let's go to our highlights. That's our last little bit here in this equation. We'll play around with these sliders a little bit, see if we can get something that looks kind of interesting. So here's the before and after, just making the adjustments here. If I turn both of these off, this is what it looks like with just the, uh, basically the shadow areas that are being affected. And this is kind of the mid-tones and the highlights being affected, and this is with everything. You can group these together as well. I'll just do uh, color grading two. So you have the basic way. Here's the basic retouch, which is just uh, adding three color balance layers, choosing midtones, highlights, and shadows in each one. And it's affecting everything because the layer mask is pure white. And then here's the color grade where you have a mask that's basically set via the luminosity of the image. And now you could do some pretty slick uh, color grading. The other thing as well, which is kind of worth mentioning, Let's say we look at this layer mask here and you see that all of these areas are kind of uh, white or gray. And let's say for whatever reason you don't want it to be affected as much. You can take your brush tool and you can paint over whatever area it is that you would like to either remove or to um, increase the adjustments just by brushing over that area. It's not gonna be as precise as it is with the uh, mask that you've created but you know sometimes with clothing and things like that you don't have to be super precise you just kind of need to you know wing it a little bit in terms of uh, being able to uh, attack just the clothing but it is possible to do and i've done it on many occasions just by hand with the uh, pen tool and it's it's worked fine so let's go back uh so yeah so this is uh this is kind of where we're going with the color grade here uh oftentimes what i will also do and this is uh the kind of image that might do well for something like this um, I'll add a levels adjustment layer and this isn't really part of the color grading stuff that I wanted to teach you today because uh, you can do color grading with the levels adjustment tool and I'm going to do a separate video on that but one thing that I do like to do with this and I learned this from a fellow photographer and it's come in clutch like so many times and it's about to come in clutch right now if you add this levels adjustment layer, you see the histogram and you see that it's kind of shifting towards the shadow area or the shadow side of the image because the image is really dark. 
So what I like to do is I'll add this levels adjustment layer, which is uh, right here, and then just hit auto. And it'll take a second, it'll kind of do its little computations, and then all of a sudden, if I do the before and the after, you see that it kind of lifted up the, uh, the shadows of the image, and made it a little bit brighter, uh, and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Like you see a lot more of the background, you see the little, uh, I guess it's like a magazine holder or something. So you see all of this stuff to where you didn't really see it before. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. So if you wanna change that, you can go to the opacity and just kind of drop the opacity so it's not as bright. So this kind of gives you an idea. So this is just the levels adjustment with the uh, color balance. This is before and after. And this is kind of the basis for a really basic color grade. Super simple, add the color balance layer, make the adjustments. If you wanna fine tune the adjustments even more, you could, you could either just use your brush and just brush over the areas that you wanna change the color of, or do what I do, make a luminosity mask, uh, invert the mask the way that I showed you. So you'll create one uh, that's normal and then you'll create one that's inverted uh, play around with the sliders until you get something that looks good for your particular image. All of the values that I showed you for my adjustments are probably not gonna look the same for your image unless you shot the same image, same location, same lighting, uh, same everything, then sure, you can copy those settings and it's gonna be fine. But uh, a lot of this is just really kind of like how you would cook food, right? You just add different things to taste until it tastes good for you and then you're off to the races. So this was the first of many videos that I'm gonna do on color grading because it's a huge topic. There's really a ton of different ways for you to be able to color grade an image, but this method I would say from like the last five or six years, this has been like my go-to method. I'll sit down and sometimes I'll have 10 different color balance layers as I'm working on an image where maybe for example, like on a shot like this, Maybe I would play around with the color of the lamp, or maybe I'll play around with the colors of the clothing because maybe uh, maybe I don't like this really dark red and so I'll change it to green or I'll change it to blue or something that's more of a complementary color to the rest of the scene, right? So these are all things that you're able to do simply using that color balance layer, applying the layer masks, brushing it in and out. It's a big topic, but I feel like hopefully you guys understand how that's used. We'll talk about other uh, color grading options in the future. If you guys wanna see that, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, in the last retouching video, I also touched on uh, dodge and burn. It seems like a lot of you want to see that. Uh, let me know, what, what, what do you wanna see first? Do you wanna see a dodge and burn tutorial first or would you rather see another color grading tutorial? Because I have another way that you could do it with curves uh, selective color is another big one that I can tackle. So let me know, dodge and burn or color grading part two for the next video. Uh, leave it in the comment section below and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm putting out tutorials usually every single week. If I miss a week, probably sick. I don't know, voice is gone, who knows. Um, but I try to put out a video every single week. Uh, August is gonna be awesome. I've got some really good content that's coming out in August. We're gonna be traveling to Oregon for the uh, Sony Condo 3.0 trip. I have a ton of really exciting tutorials that I'm really excited to shoot and to uh, share with you guys. So make sure you subscribe so you'll be notified when that comes out. And uh, without further ado, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.